Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how we can import data from a CSV file directly into a SharePoint list. I will cover scenarios around various types of columns in SharePoint and also cover scenarios where we could potentially run into challenges and how to handle those exceptions. So let's check it out in action. I have a CSV file. Data is stored in text format, comma separated values. I have data around my issue tracking system. The information here includes the ID of the issue, title, description, who the issue is assigned to, status, priority, category, and creation date. So let's try and import this CSV file into a SharePoint list. Now one option we have in modern SharePoint is to directly create a list from a CSV file. In my SharePoint site, I'll click on new list and one of the new options here is from CSV. I'll select this. I can upload from my device. I'll pick my file. It launches the customized dialog wherein I can visualize my data. It's smart enough to interpret that the first row in my CSV file were the headers. And here I have the ability to check the column types and choose a new type if the current selection that it is making is incorrect. So issue ID I would like to map this to a column of type number. Title is text. In SharePoint, we have a column called title for every list. Description, I will make this multi lines of text. Assign to, these are email addresses of users in my Azure AD. It is mapping this to a person or group column. Status, I would like to map this to a choice column. Priority, I'll pick choice. Category, I'll pick choice. And then creation date, we will map it to a date and time column. You also have the option here to decide if you do not want to import a specific column. I'll click next. I can give a name for my SharePoint list. I'll call it issue tracking and click create. And just like that, it will create a new SharePoint list, set all those columns based on my CSV file import customization that I mapped and include all the data. The choice columns, if I head over to column settings, it does not include the choices. It has imported the data though. So let's add the choices. I have three options here. Open, in progress and closed. And for each of these, I can add some formatting. Open, blue, in progress, cold, closed, green. I'll click save. And you can see how the status column is representing that information. I can do the same for priority. Click save. The formatting is applied. Similar behavior for category. And these choice columns that get generated, if you go back to the settings of these columns, they are set as allow multi select to begin with. In my case, there can only be one status, so I'll turn this off and click save. I'll do the same for priority. But for category, let's leave it allow multi select for now. The column for date and time, if I do not need the time aspect, I can remove it. And this is a fully functional SharePoint list at this point. If I click new, I can add new rows to my issue tracking list. If I select an existing item, 
I can view it. If I want to modify this, I can edit, save, and we can see that the edit has been reflected in my SharePoint list. This is a one-time import wherein it creates the list and imports the data. But what if I have multiple CSV files that I receive on a periodic basis that I would like to import into that same SharePoint list? So for such scenarios, let's leverage Power Automate. So I'll launch make.powerautomate.com, go to create. My automation job that I'm creating here, I would like to trigger it manually. So I'll pick instant cloud flow, pick the manual trigger, give my flow a name and click create. My flow trigger is a manually triggered flow and I would like the user to give me an input and that input would be of type file. I'll make this a required field. Click on new step and here I'll add a simple compose data operation action. I will rename this to CSV data. The input, I will go to expression and write the expression base 64 to string. Here, for the parameter to the base 64 to string expression, I will head over to dynamic content and pick upload CSV. So I will select this and I will click OK. At this point, let's save the flow and let's test the flow manually. I'll click test. We can see how the flow is asking for a CSV file. I'll click import. I will select my CSV file and click run flow. Click done. The flow will trigger, read that data from that CSV file. You can see that information comes in base64 format and that's the reason why I wrote that expression to convert it into text. Bear in mind the data here is stored in the form of string that is comma separated. In my CSV file, the data ends in column H which is called creation date. Now, if I look at the output of this compose action, when I get to creation date, there is a new line character that's being rendered here, and then it goes to the next row, and so on and so forth. I'll click edit flow. Now I need to split by a new line character. For that, I will add a new step. Once again, I'll use compose. I will rename this to new line and here simply click enter. New step. Once again, compose. I'll rename this to array CSV. The input will be the expression split to split. I'll go to dynamic content. I would like to split CSV data comma split this with the new line character. I'll click OK and that puts in the expression right here. Let's go ahead and test the flow. Test it with a previous trigger. The flow gets triggered. Now if I look at array CSV, you can see that the output is in array format. If I click show raw outputs, each row in my CSV file will be available as a string in my array. This is my header and then these are all my data rows. Now there could be scenarios that it picks up empty rows. 
So I would want to remove those. Plus, if you have the header row, like in my case, I want to remove this row. So I only have array of CSV data. So I'll edit my flow. Array CSV, I'll select this. My split expression, right before that, I will use the expression function skip. Skip my split expression, comma, the first item in that array. I'll close the function and click update. Let's test this flow. The flow has run successfully. If I look at show raw outputs, you can see that the array does not include my header row. And for me to remove any empty rows, I'll edit the flow, add a new step, use the filter array data operation action. The array of data here is the outputs of array CSV. And here, my expression will be item, which are the items within that array. This is not equal to empty. So this time, if I test the flow, filter array, show raw outputs, we can see it has this property body, which has the array of all my data rows from my CSV file. You want to only include data where the status is open. In my case, I want the data in column E. Column E is index four. So here I can say edit in advanced mode, copy this function, paste it in notepad. To this, I will add an AND condition, comma, split my item, which is my row, with a comma. This will give me an array. From this array, give me the data sitting at index position 4. And I want to check to see if its value equals open. That completes my formula. I can copy, paste it in here. I'll save my flow. And now if I test my flow, if I go back to filter array, if you look at show raw outputs, it only gives me those rows from my CSV file where the status is open. In this case, I'll go back to my initial simple expression, which was just filter out the data that is empty. Now that I have this array of data from my CSV file, I want to load this data into my SharePoint list. So I'll add a new step. I will use apply to each to loop through each row of my filter array action, dynamic content body, and in here, I will add an action, create item from the SharePoint connector. To create an item in my SharePoint site, site address, I'll pick my SharePoint site, list, I'll pick my issue tracking SharePoint list. And the moment I do that, it will list out all the columns. Now the columns that it puts out here, it expects the data in the format based upon the type of that column. So let's begin with title. Title in my CSV file is in column B index is one. So to get the title from expression item, that's my row of data, split this item by comma that will give me the array and from this array i want the data at position or index one i'll click ok that should give me the title issue id 
The data is numeric in my CSV file. Column index zero. So for this one, the expression will be split the item by comma and get the data at index zero. I'll click OK. Description. This one is index two. That's my expression. I'll click OK. Let's handle choice columns, status and priority. Status index four, priority index five. We have to go enter custom value and here we can write our expression. Status data is in index four. And for priority, I'll go to enter custom value expression. Put this one index is five. Let's focus on creation date. My data is already in date format. The column index is seven. So here, all I have to do is write that expression and point to the index seven. So at this point, let's go ahead and test the flow. This time I'll test it manually. I'll click test. I'll click continue, import, pick my file, run the flow. The flow triggers. It's gone ahead and created the rows in my SharePoint list. And if I refresh my list, you can see it has imported all my data. I'm testing it with just eight rows of data in this scenario, but imagine a scenario where you have large files. For eight rows, it took about three seconds, but I can speed that up even further for the apply to each loop. Head over to settings, concurrency control, turn it on. So we have the ability to run items in that loop concurrently up to a maximum of 50. So I'll go ahead and do that and click done. Let's focus on the column of type person in my SharePoint list. My CSV file, it's assigned to index three. Once again, I can go to enter custom data. It needs this claims token. And right at the end of the token, it needs that email address. And that I can simply get from my expression. The index for assigned two was three. And for category, it's a multi select choice column. Right now, in my CSV file category, which is index six, I have data in the form of a single choice. One category is provided, semicolon, it can have a second category, it can have a third category, and so on and so forth. Remember, this file is CSV, comma separated values. So we need to ensure that we do not have any commas in this file. So prior to importing, make sure that you replace all instances of comma with a different character. Let's say I replace it with semicolon in my CSV file. I'll pick performance. It's my first option. Can add a new item. My second option, I'll pick content. Now here, if I switch to input entire array, this is the format that a multi-choice column expects. So to support this format, I need an array. I will add an action for now after create item. I will use the data operation action select from needs to be an array and this as well I need to split by a semicolon now I'll click OK and in map I will use that exact property that the category column expects which is value case sensitive and then the value I will go to expression and use item create item 
I will move it below select and where I had category remember to get here I have to click on this switch to input entire array here I will simply leverage the output from my select action now let's go ahead and test this import my data the flow runs this time if I look at my SharePoint list observe how it has the multi-choice column values also mapped from each row I will remove one column value so I'll remove ID from the first one title description assigned to status priority category creation date once again I'll test my flow this time when the flow runs if I go to apply to each we can see that we have errors the first row one of eight has failed and the error here says that the column was expecting a number but it got an empty string in my second scenario I did not receive an error meaning if a text value is empty no problem it will put empty in your SharePoint list same thing goes for description which is my third row of data my fourth row has failed this one is because assigned to the person type field is empty my fifth row was successful meaning if a choice column is empty no problem it will keep it empty same thing would happen for the priority choice column being empty and the same thing would also work for the multi select category column the last one has failed this row was related to date so let's fix these issues issue ID number type this one was failing if this split action returns an empty string use the function if if equals an empty string put null that's the expression null else you put the value that you get from that index I'll click update for the date column I will do exactly the same if equals empty in that case null else put the value and then for assigned to claims I will write the expression as follows if equals empty then put null else I'm using the concat function because I have to put that claims token concatenate that claims token with the data coming in from that column notice in my case my CSV file all the rows are ending with this slash r for my date column where I'm splitting the data right before equals I can also use a replace expression to replace decode URI component percentage 0t and I will replace this with an empty string click update now if I test my flow the flow triggers the flow completes successfully and this time if I look at my data in my SharePoint list this flow triggers manually by me uploading a file so whenever a CSV file is uploaded here I want the flow to run so my trigger here will be when a file is created in a folder site address my library I need the content of the file so I'll use get file content using path site file path I'll pick the path and here my expression would be base 64 to string dynamic content file content from the body onwards I need to point to dollar content I'll click update 
I'll save my flow. My flow is saved and listening to any new file that's uploaded in this document library. Let's go ahead and upload both the files. I should have flows triggering for both those files. Both those flow runs have succeeded. And if I look at my SharePoint list, it has now been populated with data from both those files. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.